Hey, I want to welcome you this morning. And uh, it, what a beautiful day, man. I, Gorgeous. Now I do. It's a little chilly this morning, Dwayne. So I do still have a jacket. I see that. A little. Well, I mean, it's in the mid 40s. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it qualifies bad. as chilly. But um, but I know this week is warming up really warming good. Up, yeah. so, and you got your coffee to warm me up right now. I, I, I'm good, man. You're good. Usually I have an Auburn cup. That would that would have been bothersome to me. So well, I'm, I'm kind of okay. But I did I did find my Auburn. You know, yeah, just yeah. just say. Just mention that. Yeah. Just say. I've got plenty of uh, that other team's per, uh, paraphernalia around here. I was I could afraid win. of that. I was yeah. afraid. Of that. <laughs> Most people do. <laughs> That's what's kind of um, unnerving. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Yes, you would appreciate this. Uh, pastor Clay Hallmark, shout uh, out to him. Uh, he's a pastor up in Lexington, Tennessee. And, and uh, I saw, saw yesterday, he, he did a drive-in service out, uh -huh. out, out, out the way, And he had his Auburn bow tie on. He was looking <laughs> so spiffy. It's like, dude, it's an Auburn bow tie. But it still looks really good. I have to admit, it looked really It good. sounded really spiritual to me is what it, it Yeah, I figured you'd appreciate the spirituality of that, that he wore that on a Sunday. Um, no right. doubt God moved in incredible ways, I'm sure. Yeah. Hey, I want to thank you for being with me this morning. Yeah, man. Joining it's my honor. One of my dear friends today. And um, yeah. actually, you'll probably hear this storyline laced into this devotion this morning no doubt uh we actually um god put us together i was i think you were a sophomore i was a junior i, I was, was a, a, a freshman in high school yeah. where mm -hmm. my dad uh was um he was became the pastor of new hope united methodist church that's right actually for one year for just a year yeah, yeah. yeah. it was from 79 to 80 Mm -hmm. is when well, that year was. I don't know what they do now, but I know at the time, and I think they probably still do, uh, the, they, they assign pastors in different churches. Yeah. So, so we were all like excited that he, he and your family got assigned to New Hope. And we were always so Well, And I met Dwayne Moore uh, during that time. And we actually, today we're going to talk a little bit about encounter. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Dwayne is so special in this devotion because one of the altars of my life was when I was 14, turning 15, and that was in New Hope, Alabama. The move of God we saw happen in New Hope High School, but even uh, deeper than that, the encounter we had with the Holy Spirit and the presence of God in a little Baptist church behind the school. That is still there. Still there. What we were having, we called it Saturday Night Live for Jesus. And it was run by high school students. Absolutely. And Dwayne Moore, who's now the, um, he's the founder and, um, and leader of Next Level Worship International. Mm -hmm. He and his wife, Sonia, he's, uh, was with uh, Scott Dawson for many years oh, well. mm -hmm. as a uh, worship, worship leader. He's wow. been a worship leader for many years, but his heart for missions, but his heart for the presence of God. He wrote a, a book a few years ago called Pure Praise, and uh, it's gone around the world, literally. Yeah. And his heart for, uh, for people to encounter God's presence and not just um, have worship services, but, but encounters with the Lord. These places of altar Amen. that we build, yeah. and we are to be people who who we experience, encounter the one that we serve, that we love. And Dwayne, I am just so thankful. I know you've just moved back into the area. Yeah. You're up in Kentucky uh, for a season. And uh, I'm glad you're here, my friend. Um, yeah, man. Thank you for this opportunity. I feel honored. Uh, welcome to everyone that's watching and, and listening. And um, uh, yeah, we were in Louisville, and we're glad to be back home. This is home for us. I, I grew up in Owens Crossroads, Alabama. Rusty, you said that we went together uh, to school in New Hope. Well, I actually grew up in Owens Crossroads, which is next door to New Hope. Now, now for those who live in the area that are watching, you you may know it as Hampton Cove. There was no Hampton Cove. <laughs> no, there was not. When we were there, okay? It wasn't near that cool, okay? But uh, it was cool to me because it's home. And so it's good to be back in the area. Uh, we live now in Hartsell, which isn't exactly, um, in, you know, Huntsville, but it's close enough we claim Huntsville still. Yeah. Well, I know your mom uh, owned a bakery. Yeah, a bakery, Pat Cake Bakery. That's right. And, uh, and that is, you know, the thing that 
um, God just united Dwayne and I years ago in high school. Yeah. Um, do, he, he's a singer. He, he began when he was a young teenager. Singing. Yeah. He traveled all around the community, all around North Alabama and different parts of the South, mm-hmm. as well as that's what God allowed me to do. From that's the, what you did. Yeah, that's what we both did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so we, <laughs> we would do some of that together. We did. In high school. a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but Dwayne, I still today, I go back to those days. God did a work in my life as a freshman in high school. Yeah. Uh, where we saw people come to Jesus in, during school and from people being led to the Lord in the hallways to research rooms. In the it, 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 I don't even know how to, des- I was, I don't even know how to describe it. It, 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 other than it was a God thing, because there's no way that human people, especially teenagers that hadn't, didn't know what we were doing, could have could have manufactured that. That was a God thing. Well, I have people to this day who come up to me who will text me and say, you know, my life was impacted in high school when um, when y'all were doing those services yeah. out behind New Hope High, and it impacted Owens Crossroads, the school there, and. It was just a God moment. Well, uh, uh, last week w- w- I had you on a podcast with us, and and uh, someone commented on that. Uh, on they saw it online and commented. And they remembered. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they they remembered a lot. They put in, they, they were putting details that I I'd, I'd forgotten about. Uh, yeah. But but that's the you know that's the impact it made on this on these people. Well, that's what encounter does, and that's why you could you can't convince me God is not real. You can't convince me his presence is not, you know, the life sustaining breath of our life where the word jumps off the page into your life. The word is alive. I was reading this morning. I just bought a passion translation, hard Bible. (laughs) You know, I've been reading online and I waited for it. It came in from Amazon a couple of days ago and, you know, I was reading in John 1, 1, again, the word came alive. And, alive. and something was interesting, Dwayne, that um, I, I've heard this and I've read this in the past, but it jumped out to me this morning that, that in the Hebrew, there is no word for presence. The word for presence is face. Wow. Okay. And, and so awesome. it just hit me because... Mm-hmm. It, it is a that's why Moses would say, Show me your face. He wasn't saying your, face. your presence, yeah. He was saying, Show me your face. It, it says the word was face to face with God. Ooh. I'm reminded of one of one of the uh, one of the scriptures that's meant so much to me. Many, many, I have many favorites, you know. Uh, but one of the, my favorites, depending on what day it is again. And today, as you're talking about this, it comes to my mind is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, which if you boil down that verse, it basically says, gaze on him and be transformed. Now, now we can't literally gaze on him or we'd be a crispy critter and we'd burn up. You know, he's the glory, you know. But we, we gaze on him and we, in, in, in a, it, with these spiritual eyes that God gives us and, and it changes us from the inside out. It's... Um, there's no intellect that can do that. I was talking to a young man just this weekend who was, uh, he's listening to some podcasts or by atheists and he's enthralled by their, their data. He even used that word data, I'm, all this data. And he hadn't, let, he hadn't left his faith in the Lord, but he is interested in that. It's kind of, you know, I said, that's fine. You investigate all that you want to. I said, but, and then he said, well, it just seems to me, he said, it seems to me that when Jesus said, have the, uh, allow the children to come to me that that's almost something where they just turn their brain off and they just came and the little kids don't think about things and I think he's thinking it's that he wants to be thinking I said well that's fine you think all you want I said but let me point something out to you I said and I don't know this for a fact but but I don't I can see in other scriptures you know scripture should interpret scripture and there's plenty of other places Jesus says things that takes us I mean, even the huge, a huge intellect can't understand it. it. He just went over everybody's head. Now, he's not against us thinking, but here's the thing. When you come to him, you come as a child that, that's coming to their father, and you trust them. And, and you don't get, you have to understand it all. You don't have to figure it all out because you trust your father who loves you. And, and, and I guess that's what I pray for, for, for anyone today in my, in my family. 
Yeah, you know, no, I can, I'm not smart enough to explain it all to you, and I don't think we're supposed to understand it, but here's what I can know. I can know my father loves me, and he, I can trust him, and I want to encounter him in that personal, deep place in my life. And the rest of it, if I don't ever understand it all, it's okay, because I've got a father yeah. that I can trust. Well, that is, that's childlike faith childlike worship it's not childish but it's childlike childish. that's exactly that's right. Right. it's that's not right. it's childlike and that's good he said unless you come like a child uh, well, another here i go i'm on a roll another favorite passage but i'm going to read it in, in in the nlt which i've not memorized i memorized it back in the day in king james Version. but oh god you are my god this is psalm 63 i earnestly search for you my soul thirsts for you. I'm slowing down on purpose because I want to get there. My whole body longs for you. In this parched and weary land where there is no water. Mm. I have seen you in, the, in your sanctuary and I've gazed upon your power and glory. And, and I know that's not talking about a physical place. I do get that. I know that's in the heart. But the Lord's been good to us, Rusty. We've, we've gazed on him in a, in a very manifest kind of way, you know, in, among other people and God moving in a room i've seen that too your unfailing love is better than life itself how i praise you uh I, now i do love what the king james says my lips will praise you it's it's just not just inside it comes out i will praise you as long as i live made up my mind lifting up my hands yeah. in prayer to you and so uh there's a there's there's something that starts on the inside bubbles out to the outside and that does begin with that encounter you're talking about yeah well if we're not a people who i'm not talking this is not about living on your emotions no 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 no, no it's living on the word no, but you... the word became flesh mm -hmm. and dwelt among us the word brought you know, one of the words there, it, in, in, in the word was life. It's actually plural. It's lives. Mm -hmm. In him is eternal life. It's spiritual life. It is physical. He brings the life, the plurality of knowing him Amen. And, and being able to follow him. So, you know, Dwayne, if you would, take a few moments and because it just flows out of you, my friend. <laughs> and it always has because the title of your book, and we're going to put on, uh, on this people, you'll be able to go to your website. We want people to be able to do that oh, well, thank you. on uh, next level worship international. Yes. Next level worship.com. Dot com. And they'll be able to even, I pray you get his book on pure praise, thank your you. workbooks there. You can do small groups with it. Absolutely. It's really laid out well, but it's like breathing for you. And the thing that I remember as a teenager, and again, I'm going back to an encounter, many encounters I had with the Lord during that year um, that set the pace in my life. Uh, I, I can honestly say um, I walk where I am today because of what I encountered at 14. Uh, I would agree with you. Same, same with me. And that is, um, that's how deep this is in me. That's how deep it is in you. But one of the things that has always, um, I, when I think of Dwayne Moore, I think of a man of a pure heart. And that's always been my cry. I, God, I just want to be, give me clean hands and a pure heart. Um, that's who shall ascend the hill of the Lord. <laughs> Who will come near his dwelling? That, that's, of David. Right. that's one of the main ascent passages and it is. going up to Jerusalem, going up to worship. Right. And, and so every Jew would quote, that was one of the Psalms of ascent. They would quote, yeah. he shall ascend the hill of the Lord. It's an antiphonal response. Antiphonal, sure is. Yeah. yeah. He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul into vanity. So I think of you though, when I hear, when I say your name, I think of a man who you've always displayed a purity and a pure longing for God. Talk to us a minute about this encounter, this, you've already quoted, what a scripture. And, uh, but just take a few moments and speak. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. 
uh, I sent a message, uh, this is three or four years, five years ago now, to my prayer partner, and I, I, and I remember um, it was a, one of those new chapters in my life, kind of, we were moving from Louisville, moving back, going full-time with Next Level Worship, um, big changes. And uh, I've got accountability, got a couple accountability partners, and, and, and so for one, I, I sent him a message, and I said, look, uh, I'm changing some tactics. I've got to learn some new stuff. I've got to learn things I've never done before. I'm, I'm now CEO, and that's a scary title, especially if you know me. It's real scary. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and I said, but all that, Ken, I said, I said, dude, I can't do all that. I said, I mean, God's going to have to do that. If he's going to grow this ministry, just like if he's going to grow the Rock Church, if he's going to grow anything, it's going to be God. But here's what I can do. I said, you and I, because he has this ministry that's flourishing as well in missions and and I said, but can you and I, man, just like every other servant of God, <laughs> we can't really do that stuff. We can't make it happen. We can do our part. We can encourage it. We can pray. But, but ultimately, what we've got to do is ourselves. We can watch ourselves. And, uh, and I have to be reminded of that, that um, that's where it begins with, with me. It's that old, old example of draw a circle around and, and, and start the revival in this circle. And, uh, and there's some things that I, I encourage other people, and I'm, maybe I can encourage you guys today. Just three real simple things. Uh, it, I call it the leader's take, or leader's takes. And the first thing is take a, take a bath. <laughs> well, obviously a physical bath is good, but, but this is a spiritual bath. Uh, and this is that Psalm 51 stuff where, where you don't just assume, ah, I'm good. No, no, you know, you know that, the, the, the idea of confession in First John 1, 9, is if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That cleanse is that bathing idea. But the word confess there means to say the same thing as God says. So you can't just go making it up on your own and assuming you got, I got this. No, you don't know what you got because what you got to do, and we also assume, I think, falsely that we wait and get cleaned up and then we come into God's presence. That does not jive with, uh, for example, Hebrews 4 verse 16. Uh, come boldly to the throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. No, no we come into his, thank God, because of the blood of Jesus, we don't have to wait around to get better. We come worthy because he's made us so, but he won't hang out with sin. You can't just hang out with sin. He'll point out your sins when his holiness turns his light on your heart, it'll lighten up your heart, the dark places, and you'll have to confess him right there. Yeah. You'll have to confess him. And when, when we do that, that cleansing bath, my goodness. I mean, I'm already forgiven. He's already died for every sin I'll ever commit, but I can't go on just living in the junk of my past. I got to clean that. I got to let the Holy Spirit, that is, clean me out. Take a bath. Take a bath. Get alone. Uh, this is a funny story, but it's absolutely true, Rusty. About the time I knew you, bro, I was about 14, 15 years old, maybe just the year before I met you. And I don't know, but I was invited to go do a revival. I don't know if anyone calls them that anymore, but it was a series of meetings. It was an animal like that. <laughs> there was something like that back then. And, and I did a revival, and sometimes they turned out to be reviving, and other times not so reviving. But, but this turned out in my life to be very, very much of a revival. And I, the, the preacher for the week said, get in your closet this week and, 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 and confess your sin, God, what God brings to your mind, confess it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I thought he was serious. I thought literally, I, so, I, so I was staying at the pastor's home. The pastor never knew this. The, I never told him, but I was staying in this little room and they had a closet. I cleaned it out. I took off everything out of their closet and I got inside their closet. I never told them, and I put everything back exactly like it was. I made sure they never knew. But I just got in there, and I had myself a spell. I had a time for about an hour. I don't know how long. it felt like forever for me because I was. But but you know, I made a I wrote it down, and I said, and, and and there was a lot of junk in my heart that I'd not confessed. And man, I came out of that forgiven and clean and pumped, and I ripped up that paper in little tiny pieces because no one needed to see it. It was forgiven. It was gone. It was a bath. Do you know how fresh you feel after a bath? You can feel that way. So number one is take a spiritual bath. Now there's a couple more, but I got a feeling you might want to comment on that. I said a lot of stuff right there. So, <laughs> you know, the the literal, uh, you know, interpreting something literally. I did the same thing when I was a teenager. It was that same. 
I, I would cl crawl over and get in my closet, you know, <laughs> literally. I, it was my closet, so I sat, I, I, I knelt on things. Oh, did you? I mean, I know it doesn't actually mean that, but I, when but, I was a kid, I thought it did, yeah, so I did it. That's how, that, that was my theological perspective back at 14. <laughs> That was, that was the depth of what I knew. And you know what? After 55 now, yeah, yeah, I, I think we need to interpret it like that again. Well, I, I, th I think the idea is that, that you make the time and you, and you turn off, in nowadays, you turn off your cell phone, you turn off your Facebook, you turn off your distractions, and you just truly get alone with God. Uh, and and, 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 and the, the loneliness starts in our heart. I think that's the closet of our heart. But also, it, it, for me, it's a physical place because I've got ADHD you know, squirrel, you know, I'm just real easily. So get where you're not distracted and your brain's still going to distract. So then that, in the name of Jesus, you know, I just, I just ask the Lord, remove any distractions, any, any of the enemy to remove it out of this, out of this, my little room. I want to focus on you, get alone and have, and, and, and let yourself be cleansed by him. I tell you, Pat, you said you had three. What is that second one? All right. I'm on a roll now. I just wanted to give some breathing space. No, you go. If you get me going, I'm like a fire hydrant and it's scary. Uh, so number two, number one is, is take a bath. Number two is take a walk. Mm. And now don't do like Enoch and never come back. Your family won't appreciate that. But I mean, take a walk and, and do a holy walk. Now for me, again, you remember, you got to remember my personality. Yours, you may be a very focused kind of person naturally. <laughs> I am. I mean, it's it is. Cool. I am not. I'm well. It's just so much on my mind. I, mean, I got up this morning on my to do list, and I was going, "What are you doing, dummy? Stop! Stop! You know, <laughs> take a walk." And literally, I had to get up from my desk and take a walk through my house and focus, and just bring my mind back to uh, to focusing on what matters is praying. What matters is who, what he says. Um, Isaiah fifty verse four, and I may not quote it exactly, but I'm pretty close. The Lord has given me an instructed tongue mm. to know the word that sustains the weary. Now, here's the question. Here's a prophet. You go, well, of course he gave Isaiah an instructed tongue. He was a prophet. Have you ever wondered how they got that instructed tongue? Have you ever stopped to think how they get to be instructed to know what helps? What's going to help your family? What's going to help? I'm talking to whoever's listening right now. What's going to help your son or your daughter or your, your family member? God. That's what's going to help them. His word is going to help them. How are you going to know what to say? You're going to do continue on with verse, 50, verse 4, Isaiah 50. He's given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Morning by morning, mm. he wakens me, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. So the second idea is take a walk if you need to. Do what you got to do, but listen to the Lord. Yeah, get clean so that, you know, that way, nothing's obstructed that he wants to say to you. You're clean. Before the Lord, you, you, you've confessed. You've surrendered. Now, listen. Don't just make it up, though. Read his word and listen. Take a walk. Listen and pray. But that the third one, if you don't mind me trucking on here, the third one to take is take good notes. Remember that idea? He, remember, I just quoted it. He said, morning on morning, he wakens me, wakens my ear to listen like what? Like one being taught. Ah. Now in school, Rusty, I don't even remember Larry Smith. Uh, he was our he was our science teacher back then. Larry, he was a cool guy. You may you may not have had him. Maybe had some of the other teachers, but Larry was cool because he would actually let me sleep in class. I thought any any <laughs> teacher to do that was really cool. So was cool. <laughs> but I would not recommend you doing that on God. That ain't cool. You know, like Mark Lowry says, uh, "I've named my bed the Word." <laughs> yes, I'm really good. Kid. So what what you been doing today? Well, you know, I've been in the Word. That sounds real spiritual, okay? But, uh, but the reality is don't go to sleep on, get up, get up out of the bed, set at a desk if you need to, set somewhere so you can, so you can, can alert your body and become a student. Take good notes right now what God tells you. We are responsible before the Lord to do something with that stuff he's putting in your head. Something he's taught you and me over the years, Rusty, if we kept all that to ourselves, how, that'd be a travesty, man. Not that we know everything. Lord knows we don't. I told somebody the other day, I said, they said, he said, I want you to teach me some things. I said, well, I can teach you what not to do. Well, right. that's a start. Teach him what not to do. If you need to, teach him what you've learned. But, but, but if you don't write it down, you, you may not remember it tomorrow. So I'd say take a bath, yeah. take a walk, and listen, and take good notes. Bro. 
<laughs> that is, I don't think uh, it can get any more practical, simple, yet defining for, for all of us. And I hope, I hope you hear this today because, you know, we go back, our heritage is based on where we've been. History is his story in us. Really, that's all history is. It's his story. This is all his story from Genesis to Revelation. It's his story. It's the greatest love story the world has ever heard, ever known, where our creator could have, he could have started all over. But before he created us, he had a plan that Christ was crucified before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. And he did that all, not so we could obey. That's a, ref that's a heart, that's a response of worship. But that we could have relationship with him, communion with him. The garden was about communion. The cross was about restoring communion. Ooh, the garden, you guys hear that? Don't, get, don't miss it. The garden was about communion. Yeah. The cross was about restoring communion. And that's quotable, bro. Thank you. It is. And then that's, and that's what you've told us today. Take a bath. You know, you can't come. You know, Dwayne, anyone who ever has said to me or insinuated, I, I tried Jesus. Well, don't try him. Trust him. Trust him. This, this, is, this isn't a so trial good. run here. But anyone who says, I found Jesus, yet their life never changed. They didn't meet the Jesus side. They didn't meet that Jesus. He, he changed the way I thought, the way I acted, the way I loved, the way I care, the way I, re, the way I take a bath, the way I want to have. God, I want to. Paul said, whatever pleases him, find out whatever that is and just live your life like that. Amen. It's not out of legalism. No. It's not legal. That's, that's the empowerment of grace. Oh, amen. This is all grace. Right. It, I mean, it's grace that we get to walk yeah. with the Lord, man. I mean, that's grace that we get to talk with the creator of the universe. We get to have a conversation with him. And yet here I am tapping away at my computer. I got to I gotta like something or I got to make sure everybody likes my stuff. Or I got I to gotta write out my little to-do list. And meanwhile, the creator of the universe is, is over here like, in, but you haven't spoken to me yet. Wow. Would you, would you pray over us today? Yes. This has been powerful, my friend. This has been powerful. And um, I'd like for us in the future, I want us to do another one together. Amen. But, Let's do it. But I, I just really feel that right now, as we come to a close of this devotion, take a bath, mm -hmm. take a walk, mm -hmm. take good notes. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to think of that all day today. Mm -hmm. And because that's foundational principles mm -hmm. of waking up, encountering God. Would you pray over us today? And just I would love to. Father, I thank you so much, God. Father, first of all, I just wanna, I wanna stop and thank you. If I didn't, if I couldn't, if, if, if I couldn't go beyond what's already happened in my life, if I didn't know you would ever do anything else, I would still have plenty to thank you for. Yeah. If, if, I just, if I just stopped for a moment and thought about how awesome and powerful you are, I don't need any reasons to fill in there. But I got plenty. You've given me many, 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 many reasons to thank you and praise you today. But God, just the fact that you're on the throne, that you're still God, that you're the God that loves, the God that, that, that forgives, mm -hmm. God, you're the God that restores. You're a just God, but Lord, you're a God that loves all, that sent his son, your son, to take our place so your justness is satisfied and we can still be in, in your presence because of your love. God, may we not forget that. Whatever the chaos that may be going on in the lives or in our life, uh, the people around us, may there be a sweet yes. peace in our heart that passes understanding because of our relationship with you. We're not holding on like Mark Paul's song in Casting Crown said, it, uh, I'm not holding on to you, but you're holding on to me. That's right. Woo. <laughs> Thank you for that. And I pray that over everyone listening today. Thank you for Rusty, Lord. What a what a dear friend, but Lord, more than that, he's just been an example and a mentor to me. I didn't know that younger people can mentor others. Oh yeah, they can. And this guy, uh, as a freshman, came in and and uh, and set an example for the rest of us there at New Hope High School years ago. 
And God, thank you for, for the catalyst, the way you used him to be a catalyst in my life and many others there. Thank you for the Rock Family Worship Center. It's a phenomenal the way you continue to grow it and use it. And I'm just so excited to see what you're doing. And uh, thank you for his family. But God, thank you for this time. We love you. Whatever everyone goes out in their day to do today, may we um, make time this week to take a bath, take a walk, yeah, and take good notes. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you, my friend. Thank, thank you. you. And you know, today as, as our economy is reopening, as people began to get out and the, all of the <clears throat> security measures, we're all trying to walk in, but our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That'll, that'll preach. We pray that strength thing. for you today. And we pray blessing if you're a business owner watching. And I know this has been a strain, but to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly all that you could ask or think, he's the one we hope to put our confidence in. And so today, again, take a bath, take a walk, take good notes and how he brings you into places that he's prepared for you. Amen. God bless you today. We love you. Thank you. Love you guys.